or pop, how that woman could cook her food was like grand opera sound. But you could give her dining room table one look, right away you gain seven pounds. A sick man could eat himself well pretty quick, and when he got well, well he ate himself sick, and her pies without question. Would you are in this fashion? Oh, God, how that woman could cook. Hi, everybody, and welcome to a new episode of Good Looking Cooking. I'm so glad to have you all in my kitchen today. We're making chicken cutlets, and this is one of the easiest things you'll see me do, probably. It takes just a few minutes to prepare. They go in the freezer, and then you've got dinner in 15 minutes. You've got a quiet, cozy dinner for two, something to pull together for a crowd, it's just a really, really versatile recipe, and I hope you guys enjoy it. To make these delicious cutlets, you'll need the following ingredients. Four cups plain, unflavored panko breadcrumbs. One third cup olive oil. Salt and pepper. Five eggs. Three pounds of chicken cutlets a half cup all-purpose flour. Okay, let's get started. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make our breadcrumb mixture. And this uses panko crumbs. They are extra crispy. They're a Japanese breadcrumb, unseasoned. We don't want them to be Italian seasoned or anything like that. Just plain, untoasted breadcrumbs. To that, we're going to add about a teaspoon of kosher salt and a third of a cup of olive oil. And we're doing this all on the baking sheet. Everything just gets mixed right here and then popped in the oven. It's a finger job, so you just want to get in and make sure everything's mixed. The crumbs are, the, the crumbs are getting coated with the olive oil. The salt's all spread out in it. What we'll do is pop these in the oven for about 15 minutes to toast them. You want to give them a shake and rotate the pan about halfway through. And keep your eyes on this. This is not something you can walk away from. They do brown up really quickly. The reason why we're toasting these first is because we're using chicken cutlets to make this. And they are so thin that... If we left them untoasted, the crumbs wouldn't get brown before the chicken was done. So this little step in advance, just make sure that it's exactly what you were hoping to have when you pull it out of your oven. So we've got everything all mixed up, the oil and the crumbs. Wipe my fingers a bit and we'll pop this in the oven and then we'll start working on the chicken cutlets. All right, the crumbs are toasting. I've got one more chicken breast to slice here. You can buy already cut cutlets because we all know by now I like to play with my food. I usually make my own. Um, I found chicken breast on sale for a really good price, so that's even better because you can do so many things with chicken in the freezer. Now, if they're nice, big, fat chicken breast, you can normally get three cutlets out of it. All you do is lay the chicken flat on your board, press down evenly on it with your hand and take a sharp knife. Remember, sharp knives don't cut you. Sharp knives cut your food. Dull knives cut you. And you just want to go in about a third of the way down and slice straight across. So you're not making chicken strips, you're making chicken cutlets. So there we go, we've got three cut right there, and we'll add it to the pile. This is again about three pounds of chicken. It's going to make a big batch, but like I said, I'm sharing with my daughter. And once you try these, you're always going to want to keep a package in your freezer. So next is getting our breading station all set up, and we're ready to make chicken cutlets. Well, we're back. The breadcrumbs have toasted up to this beautiful, gorgeous, golden brown color. I took about a cup of them out and put them in my little mini food processor. 
just to grind them up a little more coarsely. It just kind of helps everything stick when we're making these cutlets out. So we'll put the ground cup full back in, stir it all up, and you can see we have the standard breading set up here. Flour first, then egg, then your final coating. Flour makes the egg stick and the egg makes everything stick. So if I were doing, say my mom's fried chicken or my grandmother's you know, chicken fried steak even, I would do flour, egg, and then back in flour to give it that nice thick crust that sticks to the meat instead of falls off into the pan that you're cooking it in. So I've got everything ready here. Once you get started, it's kind of hard to stop. It's a messy job. You can use tongs. I find it's just easier to get it all done and then wash my hands and move on. So we're going to take a little bit of salt. We just want to lightly season these cutlets. We do have salt in the breadcrumbs, so we don't need a whole lot, but everything needs its own layer of seasoning. A little bit of pepper, and that's it. That's all you need. You could, you know, garlic powder, any number of things. You could put garlic salt in the crumbs, but just the salt, pepper, and these crispy crumbs are going to make this one of your favorites. So now we just do, like we said, flour both sides lightly. I try to keep one hand clean. It usually doesn't work well, but I always try. Shake the flour off. We're not coating it. We're just dusting it. I'm going to flip it around in the egg, just like that, and then straight over into these wonderful crumbs. Press them into it. Make sure it's totally coated. I have a baking sheet here beside me that will fit in my freezer. I have parchment paper on it, so as I coat these, I'm just going to move it over here to its spot on the paper. And then we'll grab another one. Remember, flour first. Always flour first. Shake it off. Give it a nice egg wash. And then into the crumbs. And just press them in. You want it to really have a nice coating. And this is, like I said, one of those meals one of these recipes that you can turn into any kind of meal. I'm going to be, like I said, making a batch of these for my freezer, but for my daughter's freezer as well. You can pull them out at the last minute, bake for 12 to 14 minutes if they're frozen. Um, however, I'm saving two of these out for tonight for dinner for Mike and I. So they'll be being cooked freshly made. That's only eight to 10 minutes you have to cook these. So that just shows that you can have a really nice dinner in a really short period of time. A bag of steamed vegetables, you know, cook some pasta while the chicken's on and, and a jar of sauce. It's, it's the perfect weeknight, weeknight dinner. It's a great, dinner for two, dinner for entertaining. Anytime you can do a little bit of work at the beginning to make things easier throughout the rest of your week, I'm all for that. And as you see, this takes no time at all to make. So I'm going to keep breading these. I told you I would wind up already getting my clean hand dirty. I'm going to keep getting these breaded. I'm going to stack them up here with parchment in between each piece so they don't stick together. We'll pop them in the freezer for about two hours, let them get frozen, and then I will divide them up, stack them together in a resealable bag, and I've got dinner in a flash, and my daughter has a backup plan on those long, long work night, work day dinner choices. So we'll be right back. The chicken cutlets have been in the freezer now for about two hours. I just pulled them out. I'm going to label some resealable bags with the baking instructions and pop them back in the freezer. These are going to keep in the freezer for up to six weeks. They probably won't last that long, but it's just a great thing to have. Out of that approximately three pounds of chicken, 
I've got 17 cutlets here to freeze and then I still have two in the refrigerator for our dinner tonight which I'll show you a little later how to turn this into a fast fabulous dinner for two or 20 in less than a half an hour. So the baking instructions for these are you want a hot oven. Remember they're very thin and the crumbs are already toasted so you're going to want to bake them at 450 degrees for about 12 to 14 minutes. That's if they're frozen. If you're making these fresh or um, have had taken them out of the freezer to thaw you want to bake them for about eight to ten minutes is all so again it's a really fast fast way I spent maybe 30 minutes total time getting all these ready two hours of freezer time while I did other things and in 15 minutes you can have your main course done in the time it takes to cook some pasta toss a fresh salad so it's always good to have these little tricks waiting for you on those days when there's just not enough hours in the day so just going to slide these in the bag they're frozen solid so it takes a bit of wiggling see how pretty they turned out they're just gorgeous One done and the next one for Jennifer and her family. And we'll be back to making dinner in just a little while. Okay, I'm starting to pull everything together now for a dinner for Mike and I this evening. I've got the two cutlets that I saved out of the batch that I was freezing. And I'm just gonna put them on a rack on a baking sheet. I like cooking them on a rack. It just keeps them crispy all the way round, top and bottom. If you don't have a rack to bake them on, I'd recommend just a light spray with um, nonstick spray before you put them on. And into the 450 degree oven they'll go. <laughs> And these, remember, have not been frozen, so they're only going to need to cook about 8 to 10 minutes. I'm going to set my timer for 9 minutes just so I can check them at about the halfway point. It's going to depend on how thick your cutlets are. I've got water here boiling and ready to add salt and pasta. Remember to add plenty of salt. I saw a... Uh, chef say that your pasta water should taste like the ocean that sounds pretty good to me it's the only chance we really get to season the pasta in the cooking process i'm adding a little less than two cups of pasta this is just for mike and i um and it's not the main course by any means it's a side to go with these fabulous chicken cutlets so get that in the water stirring and the recipe for these chicken cutlets is not mine by any means. I found this quite some time ago in a Martha Stewart magazine. So it just shows you that you can find delicious recipes everywhere. You can customize them to make them your own. Imagine baking off a couple of these and slicing them thinly and having a chicken dinner salad one night for a light dinner are getting a soft bun and adding three dill pickles and making the chicken sandwich that we all know and love. There's any number of things that you can do with them and 15 minutes or when they're frozen, 12 minutes, you know, 10 minutes when they're fresh, you just, they're going to be done faster than the pasta will, I promise that. And as far as the pasta goes, I normally in the winter make my own sauce and can it. But tonight the star of the show is not the sauce, it's the cutlet. I had a jar in the refrigerator from pizza night the other night, so I'm just gonna use this to finish up. It can't get any easier. 
As far as accompaniments for this, I've got a fresh green salad in the fridge. I tossed it with a little bit of honey balsamic vinaigrette. I think that tossing your salad in the bowl before you serve it is a great way to cut down on those hidden calories we all take in. I used a total of two tablespoons for two servings instead of two tablespoons for one serving. I'm also going to toss the sauce in with the pasta once it's cooked. Again, instead of piling ladles full of sauce on top of it, you know, mix it all in and get the flavor without all the extra calories. That's how we get to enjoy everything in moderation like we've talked about before. So we've got about six more minutes left on the chicken cutlets. The pasta's cooking. I'll see you back in a few and we'll see how this dinner for two or 20 finishes up. Now here's the finished product, dinner for two or twenty. We've got this delicious golden crispy chicken cutlet dusted with a little Parmesan cheese, a pasta side with a nice red sauce, homemade or jarred, doesn't matter, and a nice tossed green salad. There are any number of things that you can do with this recipe for chicken cutlets. I hope you enjoy them, and we'll see you again for a new episode of Gina's Good Looking Cooking. Or, um, how that woman could cook for food was like grand up and down. But you could give her dining room table one look, right away you gain seven pounds. A sick man could eat himself well pretty quick. And when he got well, well, he ate himself sick and her pies without question. Would you are in this Oh, God, how that woman could cook.